Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of BP Real Talk. I'm here with Jeremiah from First Assembly. Hola. And today we're going to be talking about hypocrisy. It's a big topic Ooh, in the church. Intriguing. I know. Intriguing. There's a lot to break down about hypocrisy. Precisely. It's, it's one of the main things that people don't like about Christianity is they, they view others or they view Christians as, as hypocrites. So I have a couple questions to ask you. Talk I want to get your insight. I want to get your knowledge. I want to pick your brain a little bit. And hopefully the students will take something away from this and something out of it. So, our first question, in case anyone doesn't know, what is hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. Yeah. I feel like it can be defined many ways, by many examples, but not really. You like that? I'm just kidding. Uh, That's good. It's really just saying something and doing the opposite. Yeah. Uh, clearly what you're hearing or saying doesn't line up with what's happening. That's how I define it. That's great. Can you be a, hip a hypocrite in like a good way? Like you say something bad and then you don't do it? Is that like a thing? Or is it only like... Reverse hypocrisy. Reverse hypocrisy? Interesting. It's like underground. I've never hypocrisy. witnessed it, <laughs> but I think we should start something. We should, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's your guys' challenge. Reverse hypocrisy. Do We're going to start that today. as a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an example of reverse hypocrisy. Like, like let's say I'm like, like Jeremiah, I hate you. I'm going to punch you in the face. Okay. And then I don't do that. Okay, honestly, I feel like I do that all the time. Now that is that, you say that, yeah, is that like, that's real. Is that like, is that like, you're not gonna hit me in the face though. No, I won't. Okay, maybe. Worry. I don't know. We'll see by the end of this. If your answers are good enough, I'll, I'll hold myself back. Bet. But yeah, hypocrisy, amazing definition. There was a, I saw an Instagram post, a very intriguing Instagram post. This guy, he bought a billboard, or like he rented a billboard, and he said, describe Christians in one word. Mm. And like 90% of the words that came back, was hypocrites. Mm. So what do you think hypocrisy has like an effect on in the church? Why do you think people view Christians as hypocrites? Yeah, it's sad. It is very sad. Unfortunately though, there's a lot of truth to it. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is I'd say is what makes up the church is people, broken people. And sometimes there's this, well not sometimes, a lot of times there's just this tension of people feeling like they have to sh display some sort of unique devotion they end up performing as a Christian rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to mold them and shape them into. So then we have a lot of people that just perform or say the right things yeah. that don't carry weight. Even just simple things like, sometimes I've been in different like environments or different like moments where somebody says something like offensive to somebody in the grocery store and then the response <clears throat> for my Christian friend is like God bless you which mm. is just like it carries no weight yeah. because like it's just like a, a, a way it comes off as like this self-righteous yeah which is just counter to like who Jesus was mm. and so I think based on a lot of people's experience with broken people um, and whatever level of journey they're at they end up deeming them as hypocrites <laughs> Yeah, um, and I think, honestly, the first thing I would say is, and look inward, is how many times have I been a hypocrite, where I've said to someone, don't do that. It talks about this in the Proverbs, about the plank in your eye, the yeah. log in your eye. <clears throat> Just really, we're so good at seeing the problem or an issue in people, um, but not recognizing where we are also broken. Yeah. And... Yeah, unfortunately, that is that is hypocrisy. Yeah, That's we could go down the list of examples of yeah over examples examples. Yeah, they're everywhere. There's so many. Yeah, so there's like this this constant like conflict between <clears throat> hypocrisy and then integrity um, in the Christian walk. So what what are some things that we can do as Christians to 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 be or to have more integrity, mm. um, to not kind of slip into hypocrisy and to not like you said. Um, point out the, the speck in someone right. else's eye when we have a log in our own. What are, what are some right. ways that we can kind of combat that? Yeah. I think two things that like have marked me personally. Number one is that you can't produce in public what you haven't cultivated in private. Yeah. And so on this journey of becoming like Jesus, because I believe that to be fully who I'm called to be or to be fully human is to live like Jesus. Yeah. I need to practice the ways of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
that like just doesn't happen if you're not pursuing the face of Jesus in private. Um, it's always interesting to me, people that like, no offense to like, okay, I'm tossing shade. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Throw it, bro. <clears throat> but I've just heard so many people just like, man, I spend hours with the Lord. Like, yeah. I'm in the secret place. But like, the moment any sort of climate change happens, not physically, yeah, but like, yeah. just like, any sort of tension happens, <clears throat> they are the first person to be like super stressed or like acting out of pocket where they're just like, you know, start cussing some, somebody out or yeah. like, and I'm like, that's crazy to me that you spent that hours much. at the feet of Jesus, but you're the same, the same person I've always known. Like that yeah. just doesn't line up. It doesn't make sense. And so it says, it says in the Bible that they'll know us by our love, know us by our fruit. And yeah. so you have to, ch- like stuff has to change. Like, the way that you were has to shift and I just think that's cultivated in private yeah pursuing the Lord search me Lord like and being honest with yourself coming in a place of repentance allowing the Lord's kindness to change you shape you the other thing is just when it comes to like relationships with people whether it's a person I just met person that's like I met this dude that said had a shirt that said Jesus is something something c word and i was like whoa and of course my first reaction could be like whatever yeah yeah but there's this saying that marked me <clears throat> that i always connect before i correct mm-hmm. and just like making it a goal to like build connection and be more concerned about people's condition more than i care about being right or whatever the right thing is or the true thing is yeah. and when you get to know people <clears throat> out of a place of love and you like see people with the Lord's eyes Mm -hmm. um, it'll just change your approach to what and there's so many times where I've been like okay word I'm not gonna like jump to a conclusion here I'm just gonna like be this person's friend and some of those people that I'm like "Ah, I probably wouldn't be that person's friend are like some of my best friends yeah and a lot of the things that I saw first glance in them where I'm like oh they're just so prideful they're just such a like like so judgmental were things that the Holy Spirit needed to work out in me yeah and so well I'd say those two things yeah that's great there's there's often I wouldn't maybe oftentimes <clears throat> but sometimes we are under the authority of someone who is a hypocrite or who says kind of hypocritical things so mm. what would your insights be as to walking out in that while still submitting to authority but not allowing um the hypocrisy to kind of like go on and to to kind of become like worse and worse progressively. Right. Ooh, that's a great question. Come on. That's honestly tough. Um, Yeah, I think there's many, I don't know, there's a couple approaches to it. I think my, my inclination would be to like, Learn, just like op- observe and learn from it mm-hmm. and it depends who this person is like if it's if you discern and ask the Holy Spirit if they're a person that will receive that correction then you can come humbly and say yeah hey like some I think language is really important when you're mm-hmm. approaching your authority of just like hey I've just like I've been observing this and I keep playing this story in my head could you help me like understand or like yeah. help me bridge this gap or maybe I'm reading this wrong but it seemed like this and I don't want to hold this like preconceived notion in my mind or this narrative of you. Yeah. Could you help me with this? I think that's like honoring rather than like, mm-hmm. well, you do this all the time. I think it's important not holding it in too because then it will just come out like, well, you, well, you, yeah. which is just not honoring. Mm-hmm. So the goal with authority is to be honoring. Yeah. Um, but also... Some, some, for some people I feel like you might be in a position where that person is just blind to it and won't receive the correction from you mm. and I think the Lord that's the Lord's responsibility like they'll be found out or whatever exposed yeah. you just keep ducking if you're like a young leader under somebody um, somebody told me this not long ago they were like David just kept ducking the spears mm-hmm. until Saul was like taken out and it was that person's I don't mean that in a way where it's like man just keep ducking till it's your time to lead but yeah. sometimes like honoring your leader is just ducking the spears yeah until the Lord calls you to do otherwise 
I'm referring to the story of David, but for those that don't know, yeah. go read it. It's a great book, A Tale of Three Kings. Facts. Read it. Phenomenal book. So good. I was like, what am I reading right now that actually hit? That's great. Lava. Come on. Yeah. All right. Next question. A lot of times when it comes to hypocrisy, they actually give not bad advice. Like the, the things that they're saying aren't bad, but it's the way that they live it out in the opposite. That's what makes it the hypocrisy. So are we able to listen to the things that they say without taking into account the way that they live? Mm-hmm. Or is there, is there, we have to take both into account? Are we, are we able to listen to that advice at all or no? Yeah, it's called chewing the chicken, spitting out the bone. Come on. I do it every day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's something that has helped me a lot. Just being able to say, okay, like, even though this, this might be coming across really aggressive or rude or this person, whatever is calling me out on something that I've seen them do all the time or like, who are they? They don't have a relationship with me. Why are they calling me out? And being like, first of all, like anything, whether good or bad, I don't think it's a good idea to just take it anyways. You should always take it to the Lord. Yeah. And so from that practice, that habit, Lord, is there anything in this that you're speaking to me about that you want to change in me? And oftentimes for me personally, it's like, yeah, there's truth to that. Even if it's 5%, 1%, if I can own that and move forward and then leave the rest. Because like sometimes there's, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example, but there's things where yeah some of it might even be like the thing that's not true about the statement might be really hurtful Mm -hmm. so it's easy to like take it on yeah but like taking that to the lord and allowing him to deal with what was not true and what was true to like then allow the holy spirit to do whatever he wants to do within within my heart but yeah yeah to the lord that's great yeah um, you're talking earlier about earlier about the, the secret place, um, kind of just like sitting at the feet of Jesus, um, and then using that to like discern um, whether you should take something on or accept advice or, or all that stuff. How how would you cultivate that as as these students are kind of like growing up? How do they how do they cultivate a secret place? Um, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, and how do they walk that out? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's kind of funny language, the secret place. Yeah. It comes out of my mouth, but I honestly don't love it. Yeah. But it really just is like, one of my youth pastors in Portland said, your best ability will be availability. Mm. In the sense of like, just how available you make yourself for the Lord. How many, how intentional you can be about creating spaces to like meet with the Lord. And for me, while I was at Bible college, that was like, it started off just being, because everybody's like, there's always room for comparison. Like all that person's like, their prayer life's amazing and then you try and like replicate something but it's not authentic Mm -hmm. and I think it's just really being authentic with yourself so for me in that season which was weird like I had to get over my pride was like literally just waking up five minutes earlier and not touching my phone and just saying good morning holy spirit yeah but then that like that grew into like by the end of like I think it was like a couple months I was like an hour every morning yeah. and it wasn't something that I had to like force it was mm-hmm. like I genuinely created space and room for like real hunger yeah and then there'll be seasons too where it's like I mean psychologically just practically it takes 21 days to form a habit but yeah. there's seasons too where it's not all like feelings where I'm like oh man and it's just a discipline because yeah, yeah. when you begin to know who God is and live like he's actually the Lord of your life, the king mm-hmm. of your life. You just do it because it's like, this is who God is. Like, I'm, yeah. it doesn't matter what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I'm calling my my body into alignment with my spirit, yeah. which needs to be with the Lord, like, mm-hmm. every single day. And so, yeah, it just grew into the discipline of, like, five minutes of just, come on, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Would you speak to me today? I want to become more like you, like just not a prayer that I heard, not a rehearsed prayer yeah. or like just whatever was like in my mind or in my heart, just being honest. Yeah. That's, those are the moments where I've sensed the Holy Spirit the most because yeah. he just wants me like to be with me, not mm-hmm. like me pretending to be like, he doesn't want Pastor Jer or Pastor Matt or yeah. whoever is listening, he just wants you. So Come on. being authentic and letting it grow creating space and 
not like like who is it that says this they don't, might not have an hour to pray every day but they don't go an hour without praying yeah it's like it doesn't have to be like two hours every morning yeah like there's seasons where maybe it's not but you're just aware of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. you're aware of and you're able to acknowledge him in your life I think yeah it was just powerful yeah that's amazing yeah yeah make it your own like it doesn't have to be like you said it's mm-hmm. not a formula that you have to follow for like your secret place yeah make it your own there's people that like read a verse and then they like paint what they feel yep. there's people that journal people who just listen to worship music and just kind of sit there's like so many different ways to do it yeah um but make, it, make it your spirit. own yeah yeah that's awesome well i'll say this yeah. also like even with reading the word because i think sometimes it can just be this thing where it's like i i just sit like yeah. do worship music not that that's a bad thing but it's like I, I won't read the Bible because I don't know I don't get it or yeah. it's confusing it just can become more of a comfortable thing mm-hmm. I think reading the Bible is important in the same way of like I mean do you remember what you ate yesterday morning no do you remember what you ate an hour ago farmer's wrap but that's only because it was in my backseat right <laughs> <laughs> he literally is still in his backseat <laughs> But, whatever, I don't remember what I ate yesterday yeah. or a week ago, but I remember what I ate for Christmas dinner. Mm-hmm. And so the same time, the same thing when I'm reading the Bible, it's like, the reality is, I might not remember every single thing or every time where it was like, there's times where it's amazing, I mm-hmm. remember all the ingredients, and there's times where I don't, but the reality yeah. is both, you were nourished yesterday when you ate Mm-hmm. Wrap an hour ago versus whatever you ate yesterday yeah. it nourishes you and that's how it goes for our spirit and so it is important even if you don't understand it fully yeah. to get in the habit of like I'm just going to read this yeah yeah get into it yeah come on amazing Jeremiah thank you so much it's been amazing I've learned a lot I know that the students will learn a lot and take away from this they're lying um, no I'm for real <laughs> just kidding. Gonna the spirit right has been this. stirred, bro. The video. Come on. But yeah, thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. Um, that was this week's episode of Real Talk. Amazing. On hypocrisy. Just like that. Just like that. Jeez. Bada bing, bada boom. But yeah, again, thank you so much. And we will see you guys next week. We're going to have Camille. Come Hello. On. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a great episode. Yes, sir. But yeah, thank you for watching. And we'll see you later.